The climate crisis could not be more urgent, and we have a tool in land rights that we know works. Land rights are probably at the core of most of the solutions that we should consider. For people to be thinking about their future, to be making the right decisions, they need to know that they have a place to live, that they have access to a place where they can grow food or develop a business. Young people who have access to land are less likely to fight with their parents. Uh, that's very specific for Kenya because there's a lot of intra-family conflicts uh, within the household. And those are mostly driven by young people. We have no jobs, uh, we have no access to any form of income. Access to land is a key to resolving community and intra-family disputes. We've seen across the board in, in all of our programs that when people have secure rights to land, their political power increases, their ability to make decisions. And the more that we can bring in these diverse voices and, and give people a more equal say in how their land is governed, we're seeing really positive impacts, both for those individuals and the community at large, and then also these environmental impacts. There's a lot of uh, urbanization happening as well, where cities are expanding into the rural communities and. Uh, using up a lot of the communal land. Now with the COVID pandemic, it's actually worsened because a lot of young people have lost their jobs and they have had to move uh, from urban areas back to the rural areas. But without access to land, uh, there's no way for them to engage productively. It's a challenge for the continent. In a lot of communities like the one I grew up in, in Southern Zimbabwe, land is just everything. You, you can't do anything. I mean, it's, it defines who you are, you know, your social status. It defines the economic opportunities that are available to you. When you have a proof of a document, it reduces a lot of injustice. It reduces a lot of conflicts. Stress is reduced. And when stress is reduced, there are more time to be productive. It's very important for gender responsive laws so that both men and women could have equal rights, not on paper, but on practice. When a woman has secure land rights, she knows that. Um, she operates from a position of strength. She's more likely to be able to influence decisions in her family. She is more likely to be heard by her community. She's more likely to get access to government services. She is more likely to get services from a bank. Um, she's more likely to have a future. And if that's what happens to a woman, you can only imagine what happens if a girl knows that she has secure rights to land. I know that also for women, I know some of my sisters have been divorced and they lost everything. I mean, they didn't get any, they didn't inherit anything because when you're in the customary systems, you lose everything if you're a woman. If your husband passes away or there's divorce. I see some widows which according to the inheritance laws are discriminated and are not given land to inherit according to the customer laws. But when you see some people in some village, in some clan meetings, after a death of a, a husband, when they say no, we are also going to give some land to this widow. And this through our awareness creation, through our seminars and workshops with impact, with the results of these people to change from discriminating widows to giving them land, people are changing their perceptions, changing the mindset. I love that. It's been incredibly encouraging to see the amount of climate finance being flooded into environmental causes. What we're seeing though through our work with indigenous peoples and local communities is that climate action and conservation work and projects focused on environmental sustainability are not sustainable if they do not include land rights as a, as a core component. It's really integrating gender equitable, social inclusive land rights that makes climate action effective and sustainable. And so we're looking at conservation opportunities that, that solely look at nature, and they're missing the whole human component of that. And so land rights brings in the indigenous peoples and the local communities that have been stewarding the land for so many centuries, and brings in their expertise and allows them to govern the land and manage the land as they have for so many years before.